I want to discuss the Stern-Gerlach experiment um, and some extensions of it which give you ideas such as the Stern-Gerlach filter um, and then what happens when we apply blocks and send in states with different polarizations and orientations. Um, I'm using a slightly different input, um, so this may be slightly uh, messy, it, it may be different, let me know what you think. So we start um, first of all with the standard stern gerlach experiment. Um, now, the standard stern gerlach experiment has a source. Um, now, these are going to be particles with a random polarization. Then have um, a magnet with a magnetic field. Um, the important thing at this point is that we actually have a strong B-field gradient, because that's what causes the deflection of the particles. And then we have a screen or a detector or something at the end. Um, if we have a system where let's say we have a, an angular momentum of j, then you will have um, 2j plus 1 spots on the screen. Um, so for instance, if s is equal to a half, then we have two spots. This is a very familiar experiment. People have heard it before frequently. Um, it's one of the standard starting points for quantum mechanics. So now let's just think about what we can do. We can go on away from that and create a stern gerlach filter. Um, so this is what we would call an SG filter. Um, and here we have the same setup. So it's the same basic setup, um, but we have a blocker on the beams. Um, so blockers, and the point about these blockers is that they can actually be, they can be put on the beams. Um, that means that we have a way of created a, creating a set of particles. Um, so in this case, you might have a system in a state psi coming in at the left. Um, so that's the input. Um, and then again, we'll have um, a magnet with a B field. Um, and I'm going to say that this is a B field along a direction N. And then here we have potential blockers. Um, and then we have another, potentially another magnet. Um, and this is optional, so I'm going to put this in brackets. Um, this recombines the beams if we wish. And at the end, if we have spin a half, then we can have um, several different outputs. We can have, let's say, a beam polarized along plus n. We can have a beam which is polarized along minus n. Um, or we could have psi coming out. Uh, so these are all possible outputs um, at the end here, if we've recombined the beams. Um, of course, if we've applied a blocker, we don't need to recombine the beams. Um, so you might ask, what is the, the probability of measuring a system in the state plus n? Um, right, in that case, what we have to do is we have to think about exactly how psi is made up. So we can write um, the wave function psi as a coefficient, let's say c plus, multiplying plus n. Um, and we also have um, a coefficient c minus, multiplying the state minus n. That's all we need because plus and minus n give us a basis set which spans the space. Um, so now we know just from simple quantum mechanics that the probability of measuring a state in say plus n is going to equal the square modulus of c plus. Um, the probability of measuring minus, so p of minus n, um, is just equal to the square modulus of c minus in the standard way. Um, now, as an example, uh, you might consider a special state. Um, let's say psi um, is equal to 1 over root 2 um, multiplying alpha. Remember, alpha is the standard notation for plus z um, plus beta. And we're going to pass this through... Um, 
a stern go like filter with um, plus x open. Um, and we can ask what happens there, what's the probability of each electron passing through, um, and the probability of plus x is equal to 1 um, as um, the eigenstate plus x is given by 1 over root 2 um, alpha plus beta. You can, of course, play games. Um, you can have two or three. So let's think about what would happen if we had a stern gerlach filter in Z um, with just the plus open. And then we had a stern gerlach filter in X. And I'm not going to say what's happening there. Um, and then we're going to have a stern gerlach filter in Z, but with the minus open. OK, so if um, let's assume that we've got a plus open on X then we will get some amplitude out of the stern gerlach filter in minus z, because when we only open plus x, then we put the system into a state of um, plus x, and so of course the amplitude actually is going to be a half. It's going to be 50%. If there is no blocker on the stern gerlach filter in x, then the amplitude at the end will be zero, um, because we will have started with a state in plus z here. We will pass through the stern gerlach x filter, which will split the beams but then recombine them, thus not disturbing that initial eigenstate. Um, and then when we come to measure the number of electrons in the stern gerlach z minus, we will get a zero. So that's just a few observations on stern gerlach filters um, and why we get different results when we pass through different filters at different times. Do have a think about it. Um, play some games, see if you can think of sets of filters that will give um, similar kinds of results, unexpected ones and zeros.